Chema, he reminds me of Rogers Kakan. He's my child, he's my... We, we click, we bond. Uh, we believe that we're gonna go and we're gonna be patient on him. Very much patient. He's not those who do that. Like we, we, we last season, we last season, we released him after the fourth game. Because we could see that he was gonna take us to the bush. I mean, now see, look what he did to Pulukwane seat. You know what I mean? So, with this one, we can see that he's a coach with a vision. So, we believe that uh, with him, we are going to achieve the great things. Now, Safa has released a statement in reply to the announcement by Chipa United that they have appointed Belgian-born Luke Amel as their new head coach. The South African soccer governing body has stated that it will object to a work permit being granted to Amel due to comments that he made while coaching in Tanzania. He referred to the fans of younger Africans as monkeys and he also said that they were illiterate. Safa have said Amel is an unrepentant racist and they will oppose the granting of a work permit to the Belgian national. Safa have stated that they will write to the Department of Home Affairs in order to raise their objection with the granting of a work permit. Safa also intends on approaching the Ethics Committee of FIFA and its own Ethics Committee to charge Amal for his behavior as well as his utterances. Now joining us on the line, we have sports journalist Sfiso Ramara just to talk us through what's currently happening at Chipper United and also just in general, what is the time period that coaches should be given in a team in order for them to build up? Good evening, Sfiso, and welcome to Sport on the Full View. Uh, good evening, Vusi, uh, and good evening to the viewers. Now, before we get deeper into the story, surely before the appointment of Amal, Chipa United should have done a due diligence to see whether or not this is the type of coach that should be coming into the PSL. But, well, uh, I must say that uh, Chipa United, I mean, they are very notorious, but especially the owner, Severe uh, Mpeng. I mean, uh, the guy is, is trigger happy. I mean, the club is relatively new in uh, top ranks of South African football. I mean, they've had so many coaches. I don't know. I, I mean, I've counted so many coaches that they've had before. The likes of uh, the late Rogers Kakani. He was there three, four times at the same team, hired, fired, hired, fired. The same with uh, uh, Dan Malisela. So, the Lisson, Olo, Siema, uh, saga, you know, uh, this was uh, expected. You look at how the team started. It matches one win only, I think. I mean, they are 14th uh, on the log, uh, having an equal number of points with uh, Black Leopards, who are 15. So the writing was uh, on the wall that, uh, you know, uh, Siema was uh, skating on uh, thin ice. But I think, uh, you know what, uh, it doesn't come as a complete surprise. Yes, but now looking at Luke Amal and him being their choice of coach, obviously there was um, an, outroar, an uproar at the time when the incident in Tanzania took place. And now we've heard that Safa are going to object to the return, um, to his return rather, into the PSL following that incident involving the younger Africans fans. Now, what is your take on Safa's position on this? Well, uh, let me start by saying, uh, Chipa, I'm not too sure when they appointed Luke, they had all the facts on the table to say, you know, this is what uh, the Belgian coach did um, uh, in July this year. But, um, the, you know, Safa uh, back then, because uh, the Tanzanian uh, Football Association, they, I think they took uh, uh, the step by reporting email uh, to FIFA. Then Safa uh, pledged their solidarity with the Tanzanian Football FA to say uh, that's exactly what they are going to do as well. To say, you know, uh, they will make sure that Luke Imael does not return to South Africa. That was back in July. So I'm not too sure if Safa, uh, in fact, on top of that, they promised to write a letter to the sports minister to say the, uh, Luke Imael should not be allowed to work in South Africa uh, anymore after what he did in Tanzania. But I'm not too sure that uh, Safa did write uh, uh, that letter to the, the minister. 
But from the statement that they have released earlier this evening to say they will now block the work permit of Luke Imail because we all know that uh, for a foreign coach to work in South Africa, you need a work permit. And if the Football Association in this instance suffer as the custodians of football, if they say do not grant a work permit to this particular player, and you will state the reasons. So it remains to be seen if uh, Luke Imail will be able to take his job as at uh, Chippa United uh, after being appointed uh, earlier today. Um, Spisa, so I'd like us to now broaden our discussion a little bit. Now, the league has hardly gone through two, uh, the two-month mark, and five teams out of the 16 have already fired their coaches. Now, I want us to look at those coaches that have been let go, and I want you to let me know whether you believe that letting go of these coaches was warranted or whether the owners of these clubs have just been um, trigger-happy. You know, you look at the, the, all the five teams that have uh, fired their coaches so far. Um, these are the usual uh, culprits. Uh, it's not surprising. You know, you look at the likes of Black Leopards. We all know uh, the trend at uh, Black Leopards. It's so difficult for a single coach to finish the entire season uh, at Black Leopards. Barocca as well, uh, they are not uh, very innocent. Barocca, they also like to change uh, coaches now and then. I think their longest serving coach uh, was... Uh, 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 the popular guy who once said uh, football would kill you. I think that was uh, the longest uh, serving coach. You look at, you know, if, if uh, I mean, even with Chipa, I mean, it's not surprising. So I think all the teams that have uh, changed teams so far, it was uh, expected. So I'm not surprised at all. So it was expected just in terms of the murders of Perandi of those teams, not just generally saying it was expected in terms of they had been given a fair chance to build their teams and have a team that can perform in an expected manner. Normally these are teams that, uh, you know, always want to uh, survive uh, relegation. I mean, uh, most of these teams, they are right there at the bottom. And I think uh, that's the, the main reason, you know, the chopping and changing it's not good for the players. It's not good for, for, for a team. I mean, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's a high time that uh, PSL teams should learn from the likes of Mamilori Sundowns. You look at a coach like Pito Musiman. I mean, Pito Musiman he did not have a very good start at Mamilori Sundowns. But because of the support and the backing that he enjoyed from the management and the president of the club, you know, he... He was there for more than uh, five years. I mean, he, he won so many trophies, he achieved a lot. It shows that, you know, with a little bit of consistency, uh, you know, uh, teams can move to the right direction. So the chopping and changing, I'm not surprised. I mean, uh, they, if Luke Imael happens to uh, take over as coach, <laughs> we all know that if results are not forthcoming, he could be on his way out. They will get another coach as well. That's the trend in, in South Africa. And I don't think it's good for our football at all. Certainly. Quite unfortunate. Now, Svisa, what is a reasonable time period to give a coach? Let's take a look at a team like Kaiser Chiefs, for example. Um, where last season, they were so close to winning that season, they literally lost it on the last day. And we look at them now in this current season where they're flirting with the teams that are in the relegation zone. So when is the right time to make a decisive intervention as a team in that situation? Yeah, I think... Uh, um you know, there's no uh, right time. Uh, I mean, if you look at Chiefs, for instance, Chiefs, uh, I mean, they were top of the log for, 20, uh, for 28 out of 30 match days. So you can imagine, these guys were, you know, they looked unbeatable at all for the entire season. I mean, Milan Dorp, got all the backing from, from the management, but I think the problem is that there was a fallout of some sort. I mean, Milan Dorp, uh, midway through the season, he had a fallout with most of his senior players. I mean, uh, the likes of Kamabilia, Itumelen uh, Kune, uh, Ramashem Pachele. I mean, they were not seeing eye to eye with, with, with the coach. I mean, it was said, even before the league uh, ended last season, that even if uh, Middendorf was to win the league title with Chiefs, it was going to be impossible for him to keep the job because of the fallout he had 
with the players and I think with uh, the, 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 the team management. But Chiefs, they, it's a kind of a team that does not fire coaches uh, now and then. You look at, for instance, uh, the likes of uh, Steve Combella. I mean, for like, what, two seasons without winning a trophy, but he was there. He got all the backing uh, from from the management. So, you know what, uh, some of the teams, at least, even when, more especially if there's a rebuilding process of some sort. You look at Chiba United, for instance. Chiba United, they were in a rebuilding phase. I mean, introducing new players, you know, the team is relatively young. How do you fire a coach after after eight matches? I mean, really, surely they are, you know, they are not realistic. So that's one of the problems that we have about club owners in South Africa, people who are not uh, very realistic. I mean, for instance, you hear people talking about top four finish and stuff like that. Top four finish, but who are you competing against? Yeah. Is that is that achievable? You know, that's, those are some of the problems that we have in local football. Now, Sviso, um, owners of football clubs also have commercial interests and the risk of being relegated has huge financial impacts for a team. Let's take a look at Joma Cosmos, for example, and Morocco Swallows. When they were relegated, they found it extremely difficult to come back into the PSL. Tell us about the difficulty that a team faces of coming back into the PSL once it has been relegated to the NFD. Yeah, I must say, we'll see whether that it's never easy for a team to go to a lower division and bounce back. Only a few teams have managed to do that. You've already mentioned uh, Jomo Cosmos. They've done that on, I think, two or three occasions. But now lately, it's so difficult for them to come back. You know, there are a lot of things happening. You, 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 you look at, for instance, the monthly grants that uh, teams get from the PSL. You compare... The, the, the grants that uh, DSTV premiership teams get and the teams from the NFD. I mean, it's chalk and cheese. So uh, it's so difficult. I mean, you look at, for instance, the likes of uh, Ajax Cape Town. I uh, remember in the past season, they led uh, almost the entire season only to lose towards the end to uh, Swallows FC, who ultimately gained promotion. So it's not easy for teams. Leopards uh, as well, they, they've done that before. Uh, going down to the lower division and coming back. But for some of the teams, it's uh, relatively difficult to, to, for teams uh, to bounce back into uh, top flight football. And as we talk about that bouncing back, I mean, you said that Joma Cosmos has done it a number of times. We've looked at Black Leopards. Um, and, and, and obviously for teams such as your Chipper United, it's probably just that concern that hinges at the back of the owner's mind to say, I cannot go back there. So whenever I feel like I need to make a change in terms of my coaching, then I need to, to make that change at that moment instead of um, assuming in their mind, waiting a longer period just for the inevitable. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's been, he's been, uh, I mean, uh, Chippa United, they've been around for quite some time now. So, um, you know, I think uh, the owners or the owner should, should learn that, you know, a, a little bit of patience will help in making sure that uh, he builds a formidable team. Because this thing of chopping and changing, I think they are leading in South Africa in terms of uh, firing coaches. And I think uh, that's unacceptable. Sviso Ramara, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Have yourself a good evening further. It's a pleasure. That is sports journalist Fisa Ramara just talking to us about um, Chipper United and how they've now let go yet of another coach, and that is now Little Honolo Siema. And they have replaced him with, with Luke Amol. Obviously, a lot of concerns around his appointment, given what happened with him in Tanzania, and him referring to the supporters of his club as monkeys and as illiterate, and now Safa coming out and saying they are going to object to the granting of a work permit for him. Well, that's where we'll leave it for now. I'll be